So it's a very well put together. I love the word you use there, symmetrical. It is that. Starting to wind up some of the banding right now, the eye becoming very well defined. Again, it's going to make a big time comeback. Right now it's kind of shielded over just a bit after the interference it had with the islands. It weakened a bit, but wind speeds are still 120 miles per hour. Progress is to the northwest at about 12, so Andros Island is the next big island in the way. There are some smaller ones there, but Andros would interfere with it just a little bit more than some of those smaller ones do. That would be our only saving grace, but I don't think it's going to slow it down. Wind speeds 120, forward progress northwest at 12. The, the, the cone is still pretty expansive. I mean, if it went to the far eastern periphery, it would be a good thing for us. There's nothing in the modeling to indicate that's going to happen. The path to projected movement from the Hurricane Center has this thing right along our shoreline. Friday late in the afternoon, it should start to leave us. But Friday early in the morning till the afternoon hours, it just augers up right here from southern Brevard County all the way up to Volusia, rolling right along the coast side, just chewing things up. All the models are pretty much in agreement that it gets really close to the coastline. Timeline for you. We start the day quietly on Thursday, so you do have time to get ready. Rain starts to arrive midday. Winds pick up south coast. Friday, hurricane conditions are expected. By Friday p.m., it begins to pull away from us here in central Florida. Watches and warnings are up. I expect all of these will go hurricane warning in the next 24 hours along our coast. And the flood watch we talked about earlier, still in effect for the duration. Here with other impacts is meteorologist Candace Campos. Well, Tom, when you say the proximity of the system being so close to the coastline, we're talking obviously very strong winds and a lot of rain. Torrential downpours will be expected primarily up and down the coastline. You can see between 7 and even 8 inches possible. And that's not just isolated spots. We're talking widespread up and down the coastline. The system will continue just to ride the coastline. And if it does, again, torrential, torrential downpours will be expected. Between 1 and 5 inches of rain can be expected for the location, but the further east you are, do expect the heavier the rain. Along with the rain comes the wind. We stop the clock here at about Thursday around 4.30 in the afternoon. You can see the timeline from what Tom was talking about. We are going to start seeing those winds really start kicking up, but really the main show of this system is going to be about 8, 9 o'clock tomorrow, uh, Friday morning, I should say. Look at the winds. These are not uh, wind gusts. These are sustained winds between 117 and up to about 147 miles an hour. Those are basically our plots, but you can see in the purple shades how far some of those strong winds do reach. Most of it starts to clear out a little bit by Friday afternoon into the evening hours. Then the final real concern along the coastline, hence all of the evacuations, is the storm surge numbers. Five to seven along southern Brevard, one to three for the intercoastal, and then from basically Cape Canaveral up through Flagler, seven to nine foot waves and swells are expected. So that is going to be the next, next real big concern, Tom. All right, take a look at the rain.